a lot of people who have Tourette's tend to report that they have fewer tics or none during sex. But the thing about that is, that's because it engages your focus. So that only applies to good sex, um, which is really f***ing brutal, because I've never hurt a guy's ego more than simply going during an intimate moment. As far back as I can remember, if I'm honest. I mean, uh, uh, uh. I actually had noticeable tics before I was speaking. So probably at least since the age of one or two. Weirdly, I would not stop saying Michael Schiesmacher. I have no idea why, but I'd also wolf whistle, so I'd quite often go <whistles> and it was so clear and loud that nobody thought it was me because I was a toddler. So people thought it was my mum and they'd think she was hitting on them. So yeah, she was like, could you stop doing that? Cause uh, big burly builder men and stuff would come and hit on her when she didn't want them to. <laughs> you say silly things as a kid and people don't really think too much of it, but I did swear a lot. And um, people did raise an eyebrow at my parents because of it. But uh, 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 f off, it was, it was pretty much not that much of a problem until I got old enough that people started to be like, why is this still happening? I went to huh, I went to the doctor. I was like, my arm keeps doing this thing and I'm not asking it to, and sometimes I say stuff I don't mean to. And the doctor was like, do you hear voices? I was like, no. Do you think you have magical powers? No. Do you see things that aren't there? No. Um, and so they're like, well, you, you, know, you seem like you've got a perfectly functional mind. You're probably just attention seeking and you'll grow out of it. And I got told this about three or four times and it was really frustrating. And I felt really afraid to engage her with people because I thought they'd think I was attention seeking and I thought they'd automatically hate me. So I was terrified of interacting with people after that. There wasn't really that much of a problem until I tried to go into conventional schooling. So ha, when I started to try real school, I had a lot of barriers. I couldn't explain while I was talking, just shouting over the teachers. I um, quite often insulted other students and it kind of all ended with me being beaten unconscious by a bunch of sixth formers when I was about 12 or 13. And I was like, well, there's no point getting an education if you're not gonna have a future to use it in. So I ended up going back into home education after that. It was devastating to see that I kept hurting people's feelings and people kept pushing me away and uh, ah, people kept, people kept, kept judging me and I kept hurting the people around me that I really cared about. Even my mom, I used to pinch on the back of the arm. I didn't understand why I couldn't always control my actions and why they were so self-sabotaging. I was incredibly depressed. I ended up depressed for 13 years. I was not only socially phobic, but also socially inept. I was really awkward and terrified of people. Um, never liked to even make eye contact. That was terrifying. It just made me a recluse. I became agoraphobic. It was so difficult to get a start in life because I just became really socially phobic of people. You got some scars on your arm. Was that something that was during your this the period of depression you were going through? Well, that all started when I was about eight or nine. And I didn't think that anyone would ever know that I did it. Um, and I don't mind talking about it because I'm not ashamed. And I didn't realize that anyone would find out or know or anyone would judge me for it because I was a child and I was always alone. So yeah, I never knew that I was gonna have to face judgment and misconceptions about it. In the end, I found healthier ways of coping, but nobody shows you that when you're nine. So this was what I did. And yeah, luckily, don't do it anymore. It took quite a few years to get over it and figure out better ways. But yeah, like I said, I'm not ashamed that I got through it. I didn't really know how to explain myself. I didn't know there was a word for what I was. And I had, I eventually had heard of Tourette's syndrome, but I had such a stereotype in my head of what it was that I never thought that that could apply to me. <laughs> So my stereotype of Tourette's syndrome was that it was only swear words, that you always shouted them, that it couldn't ever be complex. And the things that I was doing when I was alone were complex. Sometimes I'd sit there and I'd just go, I killed 52,000 men. And that doesn't seem to fit with the idea of someone just shouting one random word over and over. There were certain situations where it didn't happen and I didn't know why. When I interact with animals, when I'm caring for someone, I don't tick as much. When I whistle, I don't tick at all. And when I, you know, when I f 
focus and fixate on something without distraction, the ticks go away. Weirdly, um, maybe I shouldn't bring this up, but I'm good at it anyway. Um, sex is one of those things. Um, and a lot of people who have Tourette's tend to report that they have fewer ticks or none during sex. But the thing about that is, that's because it engages your focus. So that only applies to good sex, um, which is really f***ing brutal because I've never hurt a guy's ego more than simply going during an intimate moment. Um, and I have had ticks, like I, I, I punched a dude in the dick and he stayed with me for five years after that. So he was a champ. In my early twenties, I was like, I've had enough. Uh, this is definitely involuntary. This is definitely not attention seeking. I do it when I'm alone. I know it's not about other people. And I went to the hospital and I was like, I really need this diagnosed. I want a life. So I had um, some brain scans. Uh, they tested for copper in my urine. That's why they gathered a week's worth of pee. Um, because copper poisoning can cause involuntary movements and actions too, and can look like ticks. And so this is why anyone who experiences something they ex suspect is a tick should definitely go to the doctor because you never know it could be something incredibly serious um, and so yeah they, they ruled out a lot of things um, and yeah they asked a lot of questions on the kind of psychology side as well I remember that so I ended up being about 27 when I finally got the piece of paper that says you have Tourette syndrome and my life started and I got a job I got an explanation and I got friends and everything started for me because the minute an involuntary and offensive action has an explanation, people can connect with you and relate to you. Cats is one of my longest ticks. I had it ever since I was little. Um, it started as caterpillar and then for some reason got abbreviated to cats along the way. And unfortunately, if you shout cat in a, in, when someone's driving, they slam the brakes. And so we almost had an accident. And now, whenever I get in a taxi, off, I end up having to say, hi, I have Tourette syndrome. If I shout cats, don't slam the brakes. If I offer you a fisting, don't try to take me up on the offer. And usually people take that really well and it's a conversation star. Whereas if I say nothing, then bad things can end up happening because of the misunderstanding. And so what I've kind of learned is if I preempt this, I have a funny conversation star and I get chatting with people. After I got my diagnosis, it felt like it wasn't my fault and there was no amount of therapy and there was no amount of like restraint and there was no amount of anything that could have prevented that from happening and it wasn't because of me and it wasn't because I was a terrible person, which was really freeing. Like I felt like I'd been carrying all this guilt because I just didn't know how to make it stop. Um, and yeah, that I kind of feel like it, it lifted a tremendous burden just to know why. Yeah, so you're a Twitch streamer? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's some, in some ways a strange move for a someone who's got Tourette's to move into what is a live entertainment platform. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Where there's no editing. Can you just tell us again how, the, how that came about? So, I used to play a game called Overwatch online on the PC. And the reason why I did that was because I discovered push to talk. You hold down the button, you speak, you lift up, no one can hear you. Oh my god, for the first time people knew me before they knew I had Tourette's. People didn't get confronted with any threats, any ass slapping, anything involuntary, anything rude. They just heard me. And I loved it. And I, I got so much confidence from making friends with people before they found out about my condition. I got chatty. I, ch I talked to anyone just because it was so nice to be a person and not a person with, uh, with Tourette's. Uh, 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 and that made me hell of a less terrified of conversations and eye contact, that's for sure. Um, but after that, I was, I still had anxiety. I think most people get a bit nervous in social situations, but over time I felt more and more comfortable with myself and I felt more and more comfortable being challenged and getting out of my comfort zone. And uh, uh, I've also discovered that there's a, a, a lot more acceptance than I expected. I didn't know enough about streaming for me to have any expectations that it would go anywhere. I thought a big streamer was someone with a hundred viewers. And I think the most I've ever had looking at me at once is about, oh, about 30,000. Yes, it's live and lots of people are very angry that it's live. They're like, you can't help what you say. You say things that are very hurtful. Um, what if people don't wanna hear these hurtful things? How could you force that on them? Go on a delay. And it's like, well, 
chat interaction is completely ruined. You can't interact with people live if they have to wait five minutes for you to even see the comment and decide to respond to it. I'm just gonna do what I want and act like I'm everyone else equal to everyone else and have every right to interact with people the same way everyone else does until Twitch bans me, which is what I expected to happen. I have the N-word tick, unfortunately. The thing is, context matters. Um, I kind of feel like I put in the title of pretty much everything I create online that I have Tourette syndrome. No one's hearing any of this against their will. They are warned. And the thing with that is as well, not only are they warned, but context matters. So if swear words in and of themselves are so terrible that nobody should ever have to hear them and anything that contains them should be banned, we have to ban the dictionary and Wikipedia. Context matters, it's so obvious. And because I'm not trying to denigrate anyone or hurt anyone, the reason I've been let off is to allow access for people with disabilities. And that's why I'm still here and I'm really glad that the platform has the clarity to recognize that and let me be a part of all this. When you think back to 15, why does that make you feel about how were you Brexit. Come? I don't know, I would have never expected it. I would have never thought it was possible. Uh, this is not where I expected to be. I think I've got a little way more to go before I'll be proud, but I'm pretty content and that's enough. Is there anything that you want to say that we haven't covered? Mm, f off. <laughs> <laughs> that snowballed into thoughts of I'm never going to be intimate with anybody, I'm never going to have a family, I'm never going to experience love because I look like this. If I had a face like yours, if I had eyes like yours, I'd be happy. By the time I was a teenager, I hated my face and I didn't want a surgery to improve my face, I wanted the surgery to have a new face.